This morning marks a new push to help a community hit especially hard by the coronavirus pandemic. This is part of a partnership between UC San Diego and National City, and that's where we find News 8's Evan Narani breaking it all down for us this morning. Good morning to you, Evan. Good morning, Eric. Yeah, that's right. National City, one of the cities hit especially hard by the COVID-19 pandemic and the South Bay in general really has been uh, one of the spots with a higher percentage of spread, a higher COVID contraction rate. And uh, the reason for that, that experts say, is because of a lack of resources and education provided to the community around here. So we're in National City this morning where UCSD and National City have teamed up to pre be able to provide uh, some of those resources, not only in the form of education, education, but also in a vaccine trial. 1,000 people will be selected to be a part of that COVID-19 vaccine, to receive it, and to be studied to see the effects. And this uh, is specifically targeted for communities of color and minority communities uh, really around the South Bay area, hopefully to be replicated around the country. One of the things that we found from this report is that most people didn't really understand what contact tracing was. And obviously there's there's a mistrust in the community and not wanting to pick up the phone and not wanting to talk to someone and answer personal questions. So that was Nancy Maldonado. She's the CEO of Chicano Federation based here in San Diego, discussing the need for resources that are appropriate and tailored for specific communities. By combining those resources with a vaccine trial, the goal is to set the standard for how to tackle this pandemic in underserved communities, especially with a higher rate of spread. Now, last month, the National City City Council approved the two-year vaccine study to take place in the parking lot of El Toyon Park. Researchers say 1,000 people will receive the COVID vaccine, while another thousand will receive a placebo, and then the effects will be studied on those 2,000 participants. A big question around it, though, is, is it safe? Well, the mayor of National City says the vaccines have gone through rigorous testing for safety, and they hope to clarify any questions that the public may have regarding the testing location, its efforts, and goals. So that is scheduled for today at 1030. A media conference will take place at El Toyon Park, where uh, those trailers are set up, where they're going to be testing those subjects. Uh, it's going to be between the mayor and members of the UCSD health department, as well as uh, just the local uh, local leaders in the community to be able to hopefully clear up any issues that the community has. One of those primary ones, again, being safety of the vaccine, considering this is still just in phase three of a trial and has not been confirmed as safe completely. So uh, that's going to take place at 1030 today. If you want more information on being a part of the vaccine or at least hearing more about it, you you can head to their website. It's covidvaccinesd.com. I'm Evan Durrani, News 8. And meanwhile, Johnson & Johnson has put its coronavirus vaccine trial on hold. They attribute the hold to an unexplained illness in a study participant. In a statement, the company said an illness during clinical trials is not uncommon and is reasonably expected with such a large number of participants. AstraZeneca had a similar issue earlier this year and has since resumed a portion of its trial. We're expecting an update on the county's tier status later today. It comes as San Diego has seen a surge in community coronavirus outbreaks. County health officials are reporting 46 outbreaks in the past week. That is more than six times the trigger of seven. One new outbreak was confirmed in a restaurant or bar setting. Officials are also reporting 195 new cases out of more than 7,500 tests. That's a positivity rate of 3%. The state will update uh, the county case rate at noon. We remain in that red tier. The California Secretary of State sent a cease and desist letter to one major party ordering them to remove unofficial ballot drop boxes placed in at least three counties. News 8's Chris Crow joining us live this morning with a closer look. He also explains how you can make sure your vote is counted. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Well, the best way to make sure your vote is counted, make sure that if you do do one of those mail-in ballots that you drop it off at the right place and that you fill it out correctly. We'll get to that in a little bit, but these are those uh, drop-off boxes which the state uh, Secretary of State as well as the California Attorney General are calling unofficial and illegal. They've been spotted in Orange County, Los Angeles County, as well as Fresno. And essentially, the reason why they are claiming that they are both unofficial and illegal is it's up to the county in which these ballot drop-off boxes are in, up to the registrar of voters, essentially, to designate official drop-off boxes. Therefore, those that have been set up by a party, such as the California Republican Party in this instance, uh, could not be 
excuse me, could not be official if it has not been authorized to do so. Now, it's not clear if the intent was fraudulent, if this was meant to intimidate voters. It does seem like the California GOP was simply trying to collect votes. But uh, at the same time, voters should know where to officially drop off their mail-in ballots to make sure that nothing has been invalidated. For starters, make sure that the ballot has been clearly marked, sealed in its envelope, and make sure that the envelope is signed. Now, if you are going to have someone drop it off for you, which is something that you can do, there is an assistance uh, form, essentially something that is uh, needed to be filled out by the person, signed by that person who will be dropping it off for you. Both the voter must sign the envelope and the person assisting the voter must sign the envelope. That is lost uh, through these unofficial ballot drop boxes, let alone the uh, lack of security. Now, the California GOP, you'll see right there on your screen, responded to this dispute on Twitter, writing in part, quote, the Democrat anger is overblown when state law allows organizations, volunteers, or campaign workers to collect completed ballots and drop them off at polling places or election offices. Now, the California GOP has said that they will not stop this, so quite a battle brewing here. Uh, we know that the attorney general, considering their legal options outside of the cease and desist letter that was delivered, but... For you at home, wanting to make sure that your ballot is counted, you can drop it off here at the Registrar of Voters or at 126 other official ballot drop-off locations here in San Diego County. Just go to our website, cbsa.com, click on that Help button to get a link to that list for the closest location to you. Eric and Stella. Yeah, you really want to make sure it gets in the right hands. You're right. Thanks for that, Chris. Day two of hearings to confirm Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett underway, and this is where the grilling begins. Again, you can watch that live on CBS 8 right now. Uh, today's hearing will begin the question and answer period, which means multiple rounds of questioning expected from senators. Democrats are expected to grill Coney Barrett on issues like health care, abortion rights, and the election. Yesterday, the nominee expressed her admiration for Justice Antonin Scalia's work and solidified her judicial philosophy. Listen. But courts are not designed to solve every problem or right every wrong in our public life. The policy decisions and value judgments of government must be made by the political branches, elected by and accountable to the people. So Republicans say they hope to confirm her about one week before Election Day. As for the campaign trail here this morning, President Trump is headed to Pennsylvania. The president will hold a rally in the battleground state in the city of Johnstown this afternoon. Meanwhile, Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden visiting Florida today, making stops in Pembroke Pines and Miramar during his time in South Florida. Biden is expected to address his vision for, quote, older Americans. An update this morning on the San Diego Unified School District's plan to reopen schools. Some elementary students are returning to class today. It's part of the district's phase one reopening plan. Special education and homeless students will be among the first set of students who will be returning today. The vice president of the school board also says that students who have experienced, quote, learning loss will also get the chance to return today. Some Carlsbad Unified parents are ready to rally today to get students back into the classrooms. The group is dismayed because today was supposed to be the day Carlsbad Unified reopened middle and high schools. Instead, the district decided to hold off until next year. Parents will meet up for their rally around 5 tonight. 6-11, time for your morning rush. This morning, a man who flooded an apartment building in Little Italy on purpose could learn his sentence. Prosecutors say Francisco Morales intentionally opened several fire valves inside the building on State Street in February of last year. The building sustained heavy water damage. The flooding forced about 200 people out of their homes. Jury selection is set to begin today for the first state criminal trial in more than six months. The Central Courthouse downtown has new safety measures in place. It includes courtrooms remodeled for social distancing and cutting juror pools by 80%. If all goes according to plan, courthouses in Chula Vista, El Cajon, and Vista may also reopen soon. Today, a plan to turn two local hotels into housing for the homeless will go up for a vote before the San Diego City Council. Those hotels include the residence Inn locations in Kearney Mesa and Mission Valley. The proposal would pave the way for hundreds of homeless to move out of the San Diego Convention Center, where they've been temporarily housed during the pandemic. And that's the Morning Rush. Let's get it to Netta Runpour now with this heat wave we're experiencing in mid-October, mind you. Yeah, uh, mid-October heat wave again. So, yes, we're talking about warm weather out there, but really right now, 
one of the best times to be outside because look at this. It's so pretty. We do have clear skies and as we start to see a little first glimmers of daylight overall, you can just see how gorgeous San Diego is. This is the view from the catamaran. Calm conditions right by the water. Barely a breeze really. Uh, it is going to feel drier out there today, so that's also why our temperatures will be a lot warmer out there. But overall, I mean, these colors, isn't that beautiful? Blues and yellows and oranges, all the good stuff out there for you this morning. Here's another view for you as well. Uh, now that we're starting to see more of that daylight, it's hard to make out, but right there would be Mars. Uh, this is the Mount Woodson camera looking out towards the west. So your weather headlines, heat advisory in effect. It starts at 11 today, triple digits for inland areas. Drier air, we have weak offshore winds. Not much relief in sight. Not until maybe next week we'll start to see those numbers dropping. 60 in El Cajon right now, so this is your chance. Enjoy the outside uh, because later today, between about, what, 9 a.m. to maybe 5 p.m., it's going to feel pretty uncomfortable. So hopefully you are in a place that you can, of course, stay inside where there is AC if you are inland. Air quality is moderate in the 50s. Otai, you're a little bit higher at 75. So this, uh, these numbers actually got a little worse than where we were at yesterday. High pressure is to blame a lot of times for our hazy skies out there. Again, that heat advisory not set to expire until 5 p.m. on Friday because of these numbers are along the coast near 90 degrees inland near 100 degrees. So certainly going to notice that it will feel warmer today by about 5 degrees. Average temperatures 15 to 20 degrees above normal downtown expected to hit 88 Ramona 97 and that's a look at your current conditions. Let's check in with Jenny now. Well, I will tell you that there are new crashes popping in left and right. So I'm putting those into the system as we speak, and they are causing issues. They're mostly concentrated down into the South County. You can see those three crash icons right there. Zooming in on the 15 northbound side, that shoulder is blocked to the westbound 94. There is a brand new crash there right at that entrance ramp. You will notice just a slight hiccup. 54. That entrance ramp to the northbound side of the five, that is partially blocked with a crash as well. I am seeing delays in that area in Chula Vista. Now also on the 54 westbound, that shoulder is blocked at the northbound 805. So there's one at the 805, there's one at the five. Either way, you see a little bit of orange there stretching uh, on the 805 and the five there. So this is causing backups 54, I should say, not the 805. Down south to the 805, heading southbound at the 94, at the 905, if that's not confusing enough. There's just a stalled car here. It's on the exit ramp as well, so a lot of ramps impacted. Uh, I want to show you the Coronado Bridge where we're starting to ease up with that volume, but you still are down to single digits right at that tail end. Up to the North County, we are crash and delay free. Jenny, thank you. Coming up next, the close call for one Padre star after a stabbing outside of a strip club. Plus, as temperatures heat up across the state, so does the fire danger. And are you ready to shop? It's Amazon Prime Day.